Want to know who wins the automation cage battle between Cypress or Playwright? Want to know what open source tool can help you scale your DevOps and SRE? And has your software escaped the blast radius of the latest GitHub breach? Find out the answers to these and all other end-to-end -end full pipeline DevOps, automation testing, performance testing, and security testing in 10 minutes or less in this episode of the Test Guild News Show for the week of April 24th. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. This episode of the Test Guild News Show is sponsored by the awesome folks at Apply Tools. Apply Tools is a next generation test automation platform, which is powered by visual AI, which helps you increase quality, accelerate delivery, and reduce costs. What I think is the world's most intelligent test automation platform. But I know seeing is believing. So try it for yourself right now. Create your free account by clicking on the free account link down below in the first comment. And while you're there, why not leave a comment, like, and subscribe to get alerted every time I release a new episode. First up, automation news. So it's been a while since I featured either UFT or anything from Microfocus on the show, but I just noticed they have a new release that if you're using UFT mobile, you definitely need to know about. So this latest version extends mobile testing with unparalleled flexibility to test public devices in the cloud, providing a better Appium testing experience, which optimizes your user's experience, introduces new technology updates. So if you check it out, it has an approved lab screen, simulations for Appium, iOS simulation support, multi-appium version support, and a bunch more. So all you UFT users, definitely check that out in the first link down below. So speaking about mobile testing, this next news article caught my attention. It's from Sadie, who's been a frequent speaker on the Automation Guild uh, conferences. So thank you, Sadie, for that. And he's a SETAT automation developer testing expert. And this article is all how to run integration tests on Flutter apps. And what I like about this article, it's a real world scenario of someone that's actually in the field doing testing every day in automation and Sadie's experience uh, how they test their Flutter apps. And he talks about how they run unit and widget tests, but integration tests have proven to be pro problematic. And he goes over the problems and the solutions for the types of things he's seeing when he's doing this for his Flutter app testing. So thank you, Sadie, for that. And if you're not following Sadie, definitely give him a follow because he's always dropping a lot of testing knowledge. So you want to see an epic battle between two up-and-coming automation frameworks, both Cypress versus Playwright? If so, here's a must-watch webinar that you need to register for right now. It's not to be missed. I know it's going to be awesome. So it's going to have both Philip, who is a Cypress ambassador, and I also featured him on our last episode. He's going to be representing Cypress in corner one. And corner two, we have the one and only Andy Knight, the automation panda, and he's going to be advocating or he's going to be representing Playwright. And as you know, over the past few years, both Cypress and Playwright have become major contenders for market share. And it's no surprising why both frameworks have really cool features like automatic weighting, cross-browser support, and helps you with a lot of different tracing. But I always get questions on which one should I use, Cypress or Playwright? Here's your chance to check it out. So there's definitely two heavyweight champions in the ring going at it to show you some of the major features and how they differ or may be similar in Cypress versus Playwright. And you definitely should register for this once again in the links down below. So this project is a collection of tools of different tools to help in the QA automation process. And this package uses the Tesla screenplay core package to implement the screenplay pattern for Playwright. A lot of people tell me that this is a superior option over page objects and they've seen less maintenance and more reliable tests using this approach. And this just goes over how to use the package and what the different features are that you can implement. So if you want to dip your toe in the screenplay pattern and see what it offers you versus the page object, definitely check this NPM package out and let me know what you think. So another popular tool I know a lot of automation engineers use is Postman. And I found this latest article on LinkedIn. So this is by Rebecca and has an interesting perspective from VentureBee on the API economy that I think everyone needs to know about the testers, how to test APIs. And it's even going to be even more a growing trend in the future years and how Postman is helping drive this as well, making this an API, API first type world. And I knew Postman was popular, but I didn't know it was this popular. They recently hit 20 million users. And the article goes over how most businesses are API first and they aren't using the API first approach to development. 
And this is mostly due to having smaller developer teams more focused on getting the internal and external applications working correctly. So some interesting facts I pulled out of this article is that large organizations are significantly more likely to embrace an API-first development model and companies that consider themselves API-first actually have fewer private APIs. And obviously with the growth of the API-first economy, it's something that's only gonna become more and more popular. If you're a tester, a developer, you need to learn how to test APIs better because it's going to become more and more common. And this article just points out one of the main reasons why this is a trend that's definitely going to take off in the years to come. And if you haven't tried Postman, here's your chance to try it out and see how it can help you with this new API first type economy we'll be seeing more and more of. Next up, performance and site reliability news. All right, this next article caught my attention because it's actually about a tool that I've known about for a few years, but I don't think I've ever mentioned on this new show. And I think it's a tool you definitely should know more about if you really want to know how to scale your DevOps and SRE efforts. And this article goes over how Dynatrace created Captain, which is an open source project that helps you scale DevOps and SRE. For those that don't know, Captain is a open source project, which is a reference implementation of Google's SRE principles. And their goal is to accelerate innovation by eliminating the need for custom automation scripts and point-to-point -point tool integrations. And it goes over why automated orchestration is critical as well. So definitely a cool open source tool. And if you haven't tried it already, I highly recommend you try it. And once again, let me know what your thoughts are or leave a comment down below on your thoughts about it. And we keep talking more and more about observability. And this article goes over why SolarWinds is evolving from monitoring to observability. And they just go over why they think it's critical for them to address their user's ability to automate, observe, visualize, and, and remediate their environment. And in doing so, reduce the time to detect and resolve issues so they have more productivity cycles to accelerate their organization's transformation. And the way they're doing this, they actually announced a new release of their SolarWinds hybrid cloud observability solution. I don't think I've ever heard of SolarWinds. So if you click on SolarWinds, so some key features are network infrastructure and application performance observability, physical and virtual host and device monitoring, automated discovery and dependency mapping, historical and real-time dashboarding, and a whole bunch more. And it says it starts at $5 and you can try a free trial. Like I said, never tried it before, but as I keep mentioning, observability is hot, hot, hot. If you're not doing observability, I don't think your application is gonna be very performant. And definitely you need to learn to learn a lot of these tools, if you're a tester as well, to be more aware of them. Because as we go to cloud first, I think observability is going to grow even more. And using a tool for hybrid cloud type of observability sounds like something that is going to become a popular thing that is going to be needed for a lot of organizations. So definitely something to check out or start learning more about. Next up, security news. And I'm not sure if I covered this in a previous news show, but uh, this article goes over the blast radius of GitHub's breach caused major security concerns for a lot of companies and a lot of researchers in the security space. And this article starts off with a fairly ominous warning, and that is the extent in which software supply chains may be compromised in the wake of a security breach disclosed by GitHub may include thousands of organizations. And it just goes over what that compromise was. It has something to do with OAuth user tokens, which is maintained by Heroku, which is an arm of Salesforce. And it says, in fact, the full extent of the blast radius of this breach may never be known unless every organization deploying Heroku or Travis CI platforms discloses whether their software supply chains were breached. So if your organization is using Heroku or Travis CI and you haven't checked it out yet, make sure that your software isn't compromised by this latest GitHub breach. So I'm always on the lookout for new tools that can help you with any type of automation along your software development pipeline. And so this next article talks all about contrast security introduces cloud native automation. And cloud native has been hot, hot, hot. And so let's see what this tool is all about. And so the article just talks about how they, they announced the introduction of cloud native automation for users leveraging Red Hat OpenShift. And those type of users can now deploy containerized applications with embedded security features within a native continuous integration and a continuous delivery pipeline. And this enables Red Hat OpenShift users to retain scalability while adding automated security tests as a routine part of their software development process. All right, for links of everything of value we have covered in this new show, head on over to the link in the first comment down below. And while you're there, make sure to check out our awesome sponsor, Apply Tools, with their free account offer in that very first link. Check it out, create a free account, and see how Visual AI can take your automation testing to the next level. 
So that's it for this episode of the Test Guild News Show. I'm Joe, and my mission is to help you succeed in creating end-to-end full-stack pipeline automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.